And hello, everyone. Welcome to Viewpoint, a ministry of Gethsemane Baptist Church. And today we're going to be talking about the first commandment, and we're going to be in the book of Mark chapter 12. I'm certainly glad today that you dialed your television uh, channel to this location on a live TV and that you've joined us. And I pray that you're getting the blessing from all the other programs and our worship services and our teaching. Also that uh, you're enjoying the music and all the other great programs that's on a live TV. We're just delighted to bring you the good gospel of our good God. You know, the word of God, we go back into John chapter 18 and we think about Jesus was asked by Pilate, he says, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered and said, You know, my kingdom is not of this world. And ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be talking today about the first commandment. We're going to be talking about what basically Mark said, also what it, the word of God today delivers to us. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart, with all of thy soul, and with all of thy mind, and with all of our strength, this is the first commandment. So we're going to be talking today about the intensity of our love for the Lord. And I pray that your heart will be greatly blessed. Hello, everyone. I'm Carlton Duck, pastor of Gethsemane Baptist Church. We're easily found here in beautiful Lynchburg, Virginia, one block off of Lakeside Drive. That's Route 221. It connects with 501. It connects also where well, you can access it from 29 or just anywhere in this a great city in which we live of Lynchburg. And we'd love for you to come, whether you live in Bedford County or whether you live in Amherst County or whether you live in Appomattox County or Campbell County or wherever you may be watching, you're always welcome at Gethsemane Baptist Church. You'll find that the Word of God is just preached here and the people are really blessed of the Lord. You'll find friendly people when you enter into this great place of worship. You'll enjoy the beautiful facility that we have and our beautiful grounds, and so easily accessible. So come see us this Sunday, 9.30 and 11.30, and uh, we'll keep you posted on as we open up with potentially more services in the days to come. Uh, just continue to stay with us, but right now we're still remaining with the 9.30 and 11.30 services, and wow, they have really been of a great blessing to everyone, and you can come and join in the great worship here at Gethsemane. Please, we'd love to have you. Bring your family, bring your children, your teens. We have a tremendous program in the pew called the Kitty Care Kit. Yeah. Don't be uh, today fooled by the title. It's for all kids, and it's really a great program. We also have incentive programs, and we're getting ready to launch a new one that's really going to be a lot of fun, and the kids are going to enjoy, and it's going to be a great blessing. We always reward them at the end of the program, which we're doing right now. So, all said, all accomplished, all done. Be sure to bring your, your youngsters, your kids, your teens to Gethsemane. They will be blessed. And also uh, join us every Wednesday on my Facebook page, Carlton Duck. And you'll be blessed as we talk about topic talk. And we uh, give you the opportunity during the week to choose which topic I'm going to be discussing. And then we will share that with you. And that's at 5 p.m. And at 7 p.m. we come back with a live program on prayer. And we have about 20 to 30 minutes of intensified prayer. You can be a part of that. And one final thing I'd like to, uh, well, two perhaps, I'd love for you to join us on our website. That's alivegbc.com. You'll see that on the, the footer of the screen, and uh, you can join us there. You can also become a part at the bottom of our front page on our website is how you can get a digital newsletter bulletin, rather, every Sunday. A di digital, <laughs> I'll get it out, a digital bulletin that's available for you, and you'll receive that on Saturday, and I believe it'll be a great blessing to you. I'm starting a new series uh, on Sundays, and that's from the book of Joshua. We just completed the book of Ecclesiastes, and wow, 12 powerful chapters that will change your life. So I hope you've been following along with us, and of course, if you're at Gethsemane, you're hearing the preaching, but if you're not, you can watch it on this program, and you can watch it, of course, on a live TV on our church flagship program, one-hour program from Gethsemane Baptist Church. So all said and done, be sure to join us in the new series that we're starting this coming Sunday, and that's going to be in the book of Joshua. 
I'm in the book of Mark, and I read to you a portion of that scripture in verse 30. And, uh, and you understand some things about God's kingdom. While on earth, Jesus made it clear his kingdom was not of this world. You know, you and I are not of this world either, are we? So how does that conduct reflect that? How are we living for Christ? What's, what's really being ex exhibited in our living? What is the billboard of our life saying every day pertaining to the Lord? And as, let me just go back to that portion of scripture of what Pilate posed to Jesus when he asked him about, of course, being the king of the Jews. And Jesus talked about that his kingdom was not of this world. Now, throughout the gospel, you understand in the gospels, I should say, Jesus spoke about his, the kingdom of God and the importance of it and the necessity of it and how that we ought to be involved in it. So in Matthew 3 and 2, John the Baptist preached the kingdom of God is at hand. So you look at this when the disciples, they wanted to know how to pray and how to access God. Jesus said in the model prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So it was the kingdom that Jesus was declaring that he indeed, that he would build uh, his church upon. And so he said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He is the kingdom. He is that rock. He is that foundation. He is everything. He is what John the Baptist proclaimed. He is what the word of God declares. And so if we're going to experience the, this king, this king, that we know as Jesus today, we have to do it as Paul wrote in the book of Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. He says, be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, looking at this, for the child of God, we've been placed in a kingdom today that is set apart and that kingdom is to serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Understand this is not just a king from a standpoint of life, but he is the king. There has been kings, but they've always been of frailty and failing and of humanity. But see, Jesus is the king that doesn't fail. He's the king that doesn't let you down. He's the king that's always there. He's the, he's the king that hears your cry. He's the king that attends to your every need. He's the king that sits on the throne, but he's the king that's with us at all times. So this king, he has conquered death, hell, and the grave. The king, not a king, the king. The king has defeated every power and principality. This king, the king, Jesus today, has crushed every sickness and cured every disease. That's who we have in Christ today. The king has removed the sting of death and the victory of the grave. And realizing that the king today, who has promised where two or three are gathered in my name, that he would be in our presence at all times today. The king who mends the brokenhearted. And the king today that is a way maker in the valleys and the troubles and the circumstances of life. The king who supports at every need according to his riches and glory. He supplies that need today, as Paul tells us in Philippians 4. The king today who's given his angels even charge over us. The king who has promised to keep you in the in the perfect peace that he possesses and provides for you today. Thank God his peace is sufficient. The king today who said that he would open the windows of heaven and pour you out such a blessing that there should not be room enough to receive it. I'm here today to tell you there is no king like our king, like the king, the name that is above every name, the king of kings and the Lord of lords, and his name is Jesus today. There is no kingdom like God's kingdom, and he is an awesome God, and he will move mightily in your life if you will open your life up to him and let him have his way. So there are some things today that you need to know about his kingdom today and what he expects of you and I. See, just getting saved, and I'm got saved, and I'm going to heaven, and you put a period after that. That's not where it ends. That's where, it's, that's where it begins. 
That's where your real living starts. Because remember, Paul talked about our lives. He talked about that we were dead in our sin. He talked about that Christ has quickened or made us alive in himself. And that is through the power of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and the new life that he gives us. But friends, listen, that's the entry point where we were dead. Now we're alive. What does an alive person do? They live. But we live for the kingdom of God. We live for his glory and his honor and his praise today. So when it comes to the kingdom of God, you understand that the... uh, that he today, the medium of exchange is not money, it's mercy. Because his mercy endures forever. God is not impressed nor overwhelmed today uh, or moved today by any fraction by the, the issues and things that people possess in this world. God does not run after the rich. Listen today. If you're in Christ, you're a lot, you're a lot better off than you ever perceived. You can't measure today the value of God in your life by monetary gain or possessions or materialism. You measure it by the fact of the greatness of the God that lives within you. And I believe the greatness of that God then compels us and draws us that we want to live for him. I'm telling you today, it doesn't make any difference who you are and what your last name may be. It makes no difference how big your bank account is or how much influence or powerful how powerful you are. There's none like and unto him. So God said that one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. And so we've got to realize today that he is the God who sits on the throne and he is over all and he wants to be over your life today. And But he doesn't kick down the door. He comes in where he is and invited. So he is the God who says the gold and the silver are mine. He possesses all things anyway. Everything in the ground, everything above the ground today, everything in the air, everything that passes through the air today ultimately belongs to God. So I'm trying to impress on you. There should be no other kingdom in your life but the kingdom of God and how he's working in your living. In the kingdom today of God, we've got to seek him and realize it's not based on our intellect. It's not based on our gain. It's based on how much Christ you are letting live through your life every day. So in Mark 12 and and 30, Jesus is drawn into a debate between a scribe and basically a Sadducee. And Jesus says, and this is what he declared, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy soul, with thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. So Jesus is saying that really, The medium of exchange today, the the currency of God's kingdom, is the love that he, he has given us today. Oh, greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. God so loved the world. I mean, 1 John tells us that God is love, and that love now has been placed within you and I, and we are to exhibit, to show, and to live that love. So you are to love your God with all of your soul, with all of your heart, with all of your mind, and all of your strength. And so Paul said, listen, I, I have not loved. If I have not loved, then I'm nothing. But thank God, where we were outcast, where we were downtrodden, where basically the world saw no value in us, I'm glad God did. And I'm glad today he has given us his love today. We love him because he first loved us. So therefore today, we have got to today get our lives focused on Christ and love him with all of our being today. So the person Jesus is speaking with in Mark 12 is more in love with himself than he is in anything else. And there's a lot of people that's in love with possessions and things and, you know, puts everything ahead of God. I'm going to tell you, it's not going to get you anywhere. Because sooner or later, let's get into some realities here. Doesn't uh, James tell us our life is as a vapor? It appears and it's gone. You don't know when you're going to die, do you? Let's deal with it. Well, you would like to think, I'm going to live to be a ripe old age. I, man, I'm eating my fruits and vegetables, and I'm taking my vitamins, and I'm working out, and I'm walking, and I'm doing all these things. That doesn't guarantee you that you're going to live the next day. Sure, that's, it's, it's admirable to take care of what God's given you and take care of your health. But there's no promise today. You can be the healthiest person today and be 
dead tomorrow. We just don't know. And I know maybe that's not what you want to hear, but we have to deal with realities of life. So the message today is very clear. You've got to, one, prepare to know your God in salvation by receiving him as your personal savior and inviting him into your heart and your life. And then you've got today to put a priority on your living that Christ is honored in all that you do. So the message is clear. Wherever, whatever we find ourselves doing today, we've got to find ourselves doing it for the Lord. And it's not done today in the flesh. It's done in the love that we have that God has already placed within us today. When we worship him, we we should want our worship today to be enveloped in the love that we have for him. We don't come to church just because we've got to come to church. We come to church because we love him. We open his word and read it because we love him. We pray and we call upon him because we love him. We serve him because we love him. So God will hear today the expression of our heart, and we praise him because we love him today. We don't do it for the attention or of the flesh. We do it today because our love is genuine, and Christ has put that genuine love within us today. So we don't today, we're not about religion, we're about relationship. And the fact that we know him, and that we serve him, and that we love him, and that we live for him. We are to enter his gates with thanksgiving, and we are to come into his courts with praise. One of the greatest things I believe is lacking in the life of the Christian today was so pandemic concerned, and I understand that. But don't let it rob the joy of the Lord out of your life. There's a God who's bigger than a pandemic. There's a God who's bigger than uh, than a coronavirus or a vaccine or whatever you're facing in life or the troubles that you're going through today. He wants us to, to declare, this is the day the Lord hath made, and I will rejoice, and I will be glad in it. Well, preacher, you don't know, I've just had such a hard time in life, and I'm just going through so many pains. Well, you know, there's one that can bring you out of all of that. And you've got to learn to trust the Lord. I'm not minimizing the struggles that we go through. I'm telling you today, we're trying to solve our problems on our own. And God said, I have already solved your problems if you'll learn to look to me. I look on Facebook sometimes and it's just a parade of problems. I mean, people griping about their their family, griping about their job, griping about the conditions of the world, griping about everything and anything griping about government, griping about, you name it. Folks, why don't we turn that griping into a praise to God? And I hate to say it, these are many people who profess Christianity. You're not really being a good billboard for Jesus when you're doing nothing but complaining and griping about life all the time. We need to stop stumbling and fumbling in life today and realize who we are in Christ Jesus, that he lives and dwells within us today. We today can brag today on him, not so much our favorite sports figures, and I don't really know if there's too many of them left today. We today really need to put our attention on the one that's deserving of our attention today. We're to give God today not a tip, you know. We're not just to say, well, he's a good God. Man, the best way that you can show he's a good God is how you're living for him every day and the countenance of your life. I've got people in our church, they don't want to talk about sports. They don't want to talk about government. They don't want to talk about worldly things. They just want to talk about Jesus and how good he is in their life. I get messages from people every day and just declaring the greatness of God. It's a beautiful day that God's given us, and we're so blessed beyond measure, and God is so wonderful, and I just praise him so much. You're talking about uplifting. What a way to start your day. And folks, we have to give God at all. We'll put him first in our life. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Do you love him enough today to tell others about how good he is in your life? Or do you tell everybody about all your problems and all your struggles and all your heartaches and headaches and everything else? Listen. Start giving God the credit that he is due. Start praising him and declaring he as being a great and wonderful God. Do you love him enough today to really show passion and to win people to Christ and to declare his greatness 
and to live for him and to love him and to serve him. If people are offended because of the expression of your faith today, then tell them to back off. Listen, you're not to be ashamed of the gospel. And that's what Paul said. I am not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed that I'm born again. I'm not ashamed that Christ is with me. I'm not ashamed that heaven is my home. You know, listen, all these critics today, they didn't die for you on the cross. Jesus did. They didn't set you free. Jesus has. They don't forgive you. It's through the blood of Jesus that we're forgiven today. They don't make a way for you. It's he who made a way where we have no way. He didn't, they don't heal you today. Christ is the great physician and the healer of our bodies, soul, mind, and spirit, and relationships, and everything that needs healing in our life. They didn't feel the nails, and they didn't hang on a cross for you, but Christ did. And they didn't die in your stead and take your punishment and take your shame and your shackles and then declare you free in Christ today, but he did. So therefore, today, we've got to understand, if the preaching of the cross bothers people today through your living today, just love him and let your light so shine before men. Let it so shine before all people that they'll see God in your living every day. God wants to know how much do you love him today? And it's not about lips. Oh, Lord, you know I love you. Well, that's wonderful. But your greatest element of proving, showing, expressing your love is the living that you're doing for him every day. Winning souls is what I love is to achieve. Let me say that again. Winning souls to Christ is what indeed today is what our love for him will achieve and show. Jesus finds today so, so precious. He died for every person today. It matters not. If a, a man gains the whole world and loses his soul, it profits him nothing, the word of God this declares. So going back to Mark 12 and 30, Jesus says there are four areas in which you should love the Lord, heart, soul, mind, and strength. So it's not enough to just say to God, oh, I love you, Lord. You should. But today, the things that really today make a difference are the things that you do and how you live it every day. So the Bible says where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. God said, when you give today, he will open the very windows of heaven. I'm talking about giving your life to him. It's not your finances. That's a part of our giving today. That's just an expression of the love that we have in us of Christ. But listen today, you don't measure your love by how much you give in, in church or in your finances. It's how much of your heart, soul, mind, and strength are you giving? How much are you surrendering to the Lord? Well, I, I surrender him in my time for an hour or so on Sunday. You can do better than that. Why don't you spend some time in his word? Why don't you spend some time in prayer, in conversation with him today? Listen, our families are treasures, and we ought to be a witness to them and to encourage them. But your greatest treasure that you have is Christ who lives within you today. You have to do whatever it takes today to raise your family up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord, and that's showing the love of Christ. We're living in a permissive society today that's embracing and implauding today everything that's not God-honoring, from so, uh, sorry morals to, to basically lifestyles that's not pleasing to the Lord to substance abuse today, to physical and mental abuse, and just every common living factor that people will embrace in their life today. I can tell you, listen, God's not going to embrace that nor applaud that. God embraces and God blesses and God applauds godly living that's Christ-centered. And that's how we're to live our life. And you don't have to blame it on the time. Well, you just know the times are, no, 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 no. You can live for Christ. I don't care how bad the times are. Just because everybody else is going the wrong way, it doesn't mean you've got to go that way also. So the, the, the person today, the mind, is the place of spiritual warfare. 
the heart and soul, they begin to work. The mind begins today uh, involving the things of God. And we really today don't need to be controlled by our flesh. We need to be controlled by the Spirit of God who lives and dwells within us. When you love the Lord with all your mind today, you, you will overcome the doubt that we face in life, and you'll do that by the faith that you have in the Lord. You've got to put your mind on Christ. You've got to center your life on Him. You've got to surrender your all into His leadership for your life today. You are to love the Lord with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind, all of your strength. This is the first commandment, and if this is the first commandment, there's a priority there that we must follow. So God wants you today to exchange the world for his love. And I'm going to tell you who comes out on the winning end. You do. When you put him first, when you today really center your life on giving him your life today, when you give him your heart in salvation, when you say, Lord, take all of me, God cannot use you in a part-time basis. He wants your full attention. And you've got to give it to him today to see God work in your life as he desires and he will do today. So if you've given him today your life, you've got today to put him first in all things, every day, all seven days, every hour of the day, center your attention, focus your life on him. The kingdom of God, listen, is more than sufficient, and our God is more than enough to take care of you, to help you, to supply your need, and to bring you through. You can come to him today and lay your burdens on the cross today. You can give him your life, and I encourage you to do that as we close today. As we'll be going off the air here in a few moments, just take a few moments and reflect on where am I in my walk with God? Are you doing what you want to do, or are you doing what God wants you to do? And today, I pray you'll surrender your will, your life, your all, to him. Thank you today for tuning in to Viewpoint, a ministry of Gethsemane Baptist Church. Please come join us this Sunday. We're going to be starting a new series in the book of Joshua, and you're going to be awesomely blessed by the teaching, the preaching of God's Word. The friendly and great people here at Gethsemane and our kids with a kitty care kit, all happening this Sunday at 9.30 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. at Gethsemane Baptist Church. Our location, we're easily found one block off of Lakeside Drive, 411 Blue Ridge Street, Lynchburg. You can put that in your phone and it'll take you right to our front door and you'll be greeted with smiles and people will be so glad to see you. I promise you that. That's just the way we are here at Gethsemane. We care for people and we love our our glorious and wonderful God. May he bless you mightily, bless your family, meet your every need give you the strength that you need, and listen, let's remember what we talked about today of putting God first in our life and serving his kingdom and surrendering our all to him, and then you can watch God do a mighty and glorious work in your life. He's there for you today, but the question is, are you there for him? Put him first, serve him, seek him, and watch him today bless you beyond all measure. This is Carlton Duck for Viewpoint, Gethsemane Baptist Church, and all that great congregation. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the house of the Lord, and please join us on Facebook and Wednesday nights at 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. for a live broadcast. God bless you mightily, wonderfully, and good, and we'll keep, pre- keep praying for you, and you keep looking to him. God bless you.